this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. Today I have Tony on the channel. I met him two years ago. He was out in this van camping by the beach. It wasn't even done being built yet, but he was having the time of his life. Well now, the van is done and it is spectacular. It is one of the coziest prepper vans that I've ever seen. And I think you guys are gonna be blown away by all the details. So join us for the tour. The van is a 2020 Ram Pro Master 2500, 159 wheelbase, non-extended. Over here we have the access panel for the plumbing. It's held with magnets. We have a two and a half gallon water heater. And also we have a water, um, water filter for the drinking water. Back here, we have our short power intake. And as we move back here, we can see the garage, an 11 gallon water tank. We have a small camera over there to monitor the water levels if you don't have to, so you don't have to come out and open up the doors. Down here, we have about four inches of space. This is for cargo for plywood four by eight plywood fits all the way through. So for people who's in the business of design or construction, they can put all their plywood over here. Right now we have a picnic table and two beach chairs, which are held from sliding all the way back with these ties. Here we have um, a gravity water washer fee, your fishing poles, whatever you need to when you are camping. Over here we have a two and a half gallon water backup and it also works as the exterior shower. In here we have lights all the way through with a timer in case I forget to turn them off. We got a cigarette lighter and a USB um, plug as well, outlet I mean. And a camera like I said to monitor the water level. Seat belts, they fit right through here. In order to access the couch, we have um, two sets of seat belts and uh, easy access to storage over here as well for anything you may need to take to access from the garage without having to go on the inside. Back here we have door panels simply because I didn't like the way the metal, the bare metal looked. Plus it also helps with the insulation because behind it there is thin solid helping keep the heat or the cold weather out. And on this side, the same thing. However, we have a access panel over here for the lights for the tag and the license plate. On top we have LED lights and um, two more LED lights basically to highlight the art that we have on the doors. And then we have two shades. We have a privacy shade and then we have a mosquito net and they drop all the way down to give you the privacy and the protection that you need when you are outdoors with doors open. Up in the roof, we have two 100 solar watt panels. Over here, we have an access panel with a mosquito mesh to prevent the mosquitoes from coming in. And we have a toaster oven store right over here. Inside also there is lighting and a USB with two outlets. Down here, we have a small um, storage area for the extension cords for the short power and whatever you may need. And also down here, there is another little access panel. Here's a step. It's held with a magnet. And then we have a little access panel over here for plumbing inspection and whatever you may want to throw in there. Like we have our snow cleaning brushes over there. And a little grass garden here. <laughs> also, we have a collapsible table made of cutting board, so you can cut right on it. You don't need to put a cutting board on it. Very practical, and it's also used for cooking. So this smoke can bend right out of your sliding door. I removed the bench that came with this just because I like this space. And if you look in here, remove this. I utilize this space also for fishing rods. In here we have a small ottoman for shoe storage. Back here we have a hamper for dirty clothes. 
and a small round table we have two tables a rectangular one and a small one also back there we have a small picnic table easy access and a fire extinguisher always of course as you come in the first thing you're gonna see is the sink or the galley I think they call it the kitchen we have filter water this is the switch for the water pump we got filter, filter water hot and cold water and these are the light controls we have I think it's about six different zones this one controls the entrance this one controls this light right over here and this one's control the rear lights they're all dimmable so you can set the light at the right temperature also we have a little remote over here for the LED lights that run across the top underneath there over here and on the floor in building this van was very important to keep in mind accessibility in order to be able to service and upgrade the electrical fuse panel is over here all these panels are detachable they're held with magnets so you can maintain service add-on or do whatever you need to do we have a 110 outlet over here a USB cigarette lighter or socket and a double USB socket as well water pump fan for the electrical system and uh, spreader lights for underneath the band for the floor over here we have storage paper goods bowls more storage over here with small containers held with magnets over here we have an open easy access storage as well for cereals coffee um, protein shakes what have you down here it's this uh, removable sink panel this is this is a prepper van so everything can be taken out even the sink can be removed and taken with you and then use the portable shower in order to set up a temporary addition washing station if you are doing a picnic and want to step out of the van down here we have our cleaning supplies garbage cleaning products recycle there's the water over water heater and also down here there's the water system this is held with magnets and then you pull it out and the whole water system is accessible and easy to service or to clean the, the particle trap down there there are also water leak sensors throughout in case there was a leak they will beep and warn you over here we have space for the toaster whatever you may want to store in there is quite a lot of space this is also on a turn dimmer and also we have a outlet dual usb outlet out there there's more storage down here with um custom made to fit these containers where you can put whatever you may want to carry and have easy access to it this door won't open unless you click it up and then pull it's got a very strong magnet and you break the tension by just lifting it up but it doesn't come out here we have all the cooking utensils and the silverware over here we have a small storage area bungees to hold things back when we sec when we transport in anything in here we use these bungees with these hooks that are here and there that holds whatever merchandise you're transporting in here we have a fan rechargeable fan but it is also connected to a usb outlet over there dual usb outlet and then we have led lights over here over here we have uh, window covers made of a uh, reflective and then felt on top their mark so you know which window it belongs to these things are great because they do really reduce either the heat or the cold weather they keep it out and then we have plenty of storage back there for other things over here we have a curtain for the shower we'll get to that later right now let me just show you the rest of the storage over here on the kitchen we got our kettle Tupperware blender glasses drinking glasses and uh, all different pots and pans plates bowls strainer all the kind of stuff that you need basic stuff that you need 
to make a meal. Down here you have a small storage for spices, whatever you may want to keep there. And again, your window covers. There's about 40 something lights. They're all on dimmers. Every single light is on dimmer. But if this isn't enough, <laughs> then there is more light. Really way too much. <laughs> Here we have the power controller for the refrigerator. Either 120 from the Delta, which is the power system I use, from the car generator, or from the 12 volt from the Delta battery. Again, this dimmer is for the bathroom area. We have a 120, a cigarette lighter, and a dual USB outlet, 12 volts, of course, and a fan for the refrigerator. As George from Humble Road will say, ventilation, ventilation. <laughs> this is a Calamera, that's the brand name. It's big enough and it works. Perfect. And down here we have plenty of room for groceries canned goods. This is the induction cooktop and we normally set it up here for cooking since we have the max fan on top or if it's a beautiful day which I prefer we'll set it up here plug it in there and open up this lighting door so all the smoke can go out. Or if you prefer and in order to save your power you can use the propane stove. But also back here Behind the drawer, there is more room down there. So the kick toe was used to create additional space where you can keep whatever you need to keep. Over here, we have a Max Fan Deluxe Remote Control. We have two of this. Um, this one could very well be removed and replaced with an air conditioner if you want it, since I do not have an air conditioner. Or it could be installed on this area since there is uh, plenty of room up here. In thinking of the design of this van, it was very important for me to have space. Not space for things, not storage for stuff, but space for experiences to interact with your friends. So you can be here cooking. This is the cooking area over here. And you can have somebody else here doing the dishes. As you see, there is plenty of space. And again, the counters are angled in a way, so your head doesn't bump into the counter when you are here cooking. You have plenty of head space. Same thing here as well. Your head will not hit the counters as they taper in as they move down towards the working areas. Over here we have storage. More storage. Every single storage have motion sensor lights. They go on when it's dark, so this is not going on right now. But they're all motion sensor lights. They go on the moment you open up the doors. And a little mirror here and a couple of hooks. Also another little mirror over here. The mirrors allow you to be able to look at a different angles of the outside of the van when you're sitting down. So if I am sitting down here, I'm able to see in the back by using this mirror, same thing with that mirror over there, or that mirror over there, or the mirror over there. Plus they make this space look bigger and brighter. Over here we have another outlet. There's outlets everywhere in this van. And over here we have another light. Anywhere you see these little decals, tells you there is a light. And again, all the lights are dimmable. Lighting is very important for me. You should be able to control the light and control the mood. The light should not dictate your mood. Over here, we have a HDMI cable. So you can connect your phone to the TV or you can stream to the TV directly. I have a cup holder, a pass-through for your 120 when for the 120 uh, outlet that is inside for your work for the heater in winter. I don't have a Webasto heater. I use a small 700 watt uh, portable heater. Works very well in the winter for me. However, I do have the room to add a Webasto heater if I want it in the future, but we'll get to that later. Over here is the actually the whole brains of the electrical power. This is the Delta EcoFlow Delta 1300 watt hours. It is truly phenomenal. And one of the things that I like the most is that it recharges from zero to 100 in basically an hour. It is one of the fastest recharging power banks out in the market. And uh, it can take up to 300 watts. I only have 
200 watt solar and I do have room to add more panels if necessary. Down here we have the surge protector which is connected to the shore power so when you connect the shore power on the outside as I showed you earlier your power comes in through here and here we can connect the water heater which we connect on demand as needed we have the refrigerator 12 volt connected to the shore power this switch over here it's to select either from the Delta EcoFlow or number two from the shore power directly if you hooked up the 110 this is for the water pump inside we have a fan keeping the power station cool as George from Humble Road would say <laughs> ventilation 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 and I keep referring to George because really he was my inspiration for during this whole learning process of building a van so kudos and um, to George for inspiring so many people me included down here we have more storage and like I said there is lighting everywhere in every corner and everything is dimmable we have a lagoon table we can move anywhere any which way you want this is one of two tables we have we also have a round table and we'll get to that in a second over here down there we have another 12 volt outlet like I said there's outlets everywhere it is very convenient you can never have enough 12 volt outlets and this bench is also storage so in doing this I realized that if I wanted to put a webasto here I could put it in here since I don't have a passenger front seat so I would put the webasto heater or I would put another um, Delta um, EcoFlow power unit to power just the refrigerator and leave that other one for just the lights and the fans since the refrigerator is one of the items that consumes most of the power in your van. Here we have another light fixture again on dimmer everything is on dimmers and a little desk, desk lamp with three different light settings reading lights at each side of the build with a blue night light and up here we have a storage for clothes linens bedding what have you very strong magnet so this never drops down we have mood lights over here shooting up independent sun also on dimmers and again it works with this too as well and then we have the LED lights in the back for a little mood down here we have more storage and also over here so there is plenty of storage even though we don't have um, cabinets running along in the back there is plenty of storage over here for anything you may need there is plenty of space for things but there's also more room for people for friends and for experiences back here we have a rechargeable fan but it is also connected to a 12 volt um, outlet dual outlet and again this is the controller for the lights now let's talk about the couch in designing the couch I want this to be multifunctional without getting extremely complicated it works in a few ways for the bed mode you just slide the Lego table out of the way pull from the center back drops put your pillows and just like that your bed is made then to close it up pull your cushion forward and push back that's it now there is also a reclining mode we remove this table drop the table underneath the cushions there is what is called tongue cat cat's tongue which is a grip strip that prevents the cushion from sliding flip this around now you have a recliner and your table goes over here
and then we put this cocktail table and there you are. Down here as well there is room for magazines. It's a little cubby over here. And we have another one here on the left which is a big, little bit deeper. The windows have a blackout thermal shade but also in the back we have the reflective window covers that really work well in keeping the heat out, reflect, reflecting, refracting the heat and the sun or just, just simply pull down your shades and they work just as well but this really changes it, it, the temperature it just really reduces all the heat all the cold weather as well by keeping insulating the windows we have recessed LED lights over here you can change it to any color you want a little trim to hide where the panels connect but I think that they also work as a nice interesting design aspect the ceiling is a quarter inch ply, very thin. And again, on the unions, I use a little bit of trim to hide the unions between one panel and the other. Just trying to keep it very simple and keep it very light. Keeping the weight light in the van is very important. Going back to the couch. This is in the reclining mode, but say you have a couple friends hanging out, then you just light everything back and put these covers back here. And now you have created an L-shape seating, so you can have, hang out with your friends. Moving over here back to the front, this is the shower. Let's start with the access to the bathroom. This is a urinal, which I think is utmost importance for any man who owns a van, because a funnel and a bottle just didn't do it for me. At my age, you realize you're gonna be <laughs> using this more often than not. Here we have a dry flush toilet, which leaves inside the shower. This opens up, hold this curtain back, and there's your shower. To use the shower, we remove this panel here, and take the dry flush toilet out. And that gives you access now to your shower. Again, hot or cold water. How the curtain system works. Really simple, if I remember how to do it. <laughs> how does the shower curtain work? <laughs> okay, we remove this. And this is being held here with two little hooks. Take this out. All right, so we click this little hooky right here. And this is just um, curtain. You know, these are the uh, hanging track hooks, but I use them for this purpose. Very simple. Click it there. And then we hang this right over here. This guy clicks over here. And then this guy's right here. And there's your shower. And it's open at top, so you have the air coming out here. And once you're in the shower, here's the access to your nozzle and your knobs. Down here on the floor is a shower pan, which is 24 by 30, plenty of room. It may look a little small, but you still have room behind the curtains. That goes back a little bit more. And here's your drain, just to keep bugs and critters out. Curtain is put away. Nice and easy. And then we we'll put the toilet back in place. And again, I'll talk a little bit more about this door, which is also great storage. Little vacuum cleaner, 12 volt. Highly recommend it for RV life. Also, this is built in a way where you're using the urinal, your curtain can be open and you still have privacy from people outside because it is much higher. But 
if that door was open, then this clicks over here and keeps the door in this angle. And now you can use the urinal and still have your privacy. And this is especially important when you're in an angle, in a negative angle, and the door tends to just slide all the way back with our control. So rather than holding it, we just keep it over here. The door is held with magnets, but if you off-road in, it has a safety latch over here to prevent the door from opening. And then once you're done with your shower, you just drop this lid, push your curtains back, drop your lid, creates the appearance of a window being back there. Does make you feel at home. Close your door, put this back here, which holds the curtain back and hold things from sliding back. It just held with two little points of Velcro back there. I, I film a lot of vans. I see a lot of vans. They're all really cool. This one like steps it up another few notches. How long did this take you to build? Well, I started this during the pandemic in October of 2020. And I ended up just last week. So that's almost two and a half years. Of course, I don't have a workshop and I don't have a garage, covered garage. So I was subject to the weather, snow, rain that dictated the days that I could work. It also took a long time because I am very detail oriented. You know, I'm very the specific about the quality of the work, about the finishing on the wood, about not having any rough or crooked lines, about the paints and the sealers them as professionally as possible. When I wanted to buy a van, I couldn't find something that offered me the space I was looking for. Everything just felt claustrophobic, counters and covers everywhere. And I knew I wanted something open, something unique that would allow me to feel like I'm in, I'm in a small room in a studio rather than being in a van. And I think I captured that. I feel very comfortable over here. I have plenty of space. I can host my friends over here. I can have dinner. I can have people washing, cooking, prepping. So, you know, this is really more than what I expected. I'm very happy with the results. And it's spectacular. You know, yeah. One thing that like people might have forgot at the beginning of the video, we showed the exterior storage underneath. So this whole underside of this floor is storage. You could you could have four or five three quarter inch pieces of finished birch plywood underneath here, but there's still enough room for someone that's six feet tall to stand. From yes, that's floor correct. To Seventy-two inches tall, and keeping in mind that we lost about six inches from the sub floor like you said for storing or carrying wood or the picnic table or the chairs and the bed now that you mention it uh, i'm talking about measurements the bed measures 72 by 50 so that's also pretty comfortable size for for a bed in a class b uh, motorhome it's a nice size double bed so now it's done i know like you've been using it a little bit but you, you used it periodically while you were building it and that's how you learned how to make changes and, and what you wanted what you didn't want it what's next yeah actually you know only when you start using the van as you're building it and you start trying it in when you realize what works and what doesn't what needs to be tweaked what needs to be changed so during that whole two years of building the van it's been a lot of tweaking and and, and retrofitting and changing things around what's next well you know i'm done with this one <laughs> And I, I never thought I'd say this, I, but I never thought I would sell it. I think this is the culmination of all my years of work in the design industry. Are you up for another one? Yeah, yeah, I, I'm pretty much bored not building. I think building and designing is my thing and I think I'm gonna be selling this one. And um, I wanna start probably with the same ProMaster. I might give the Ford a shot but uh, I have a different layout now. I want to put everything in the back and I want to put the couch over here. That'll be my my next build, which I think that, yeah, I think that's happening. I, I need to, I need to create, I need to build. Well, if you decide to sell it, I'll make sure I put a link in the description so our viewers could check it out. And uh, I can't wait to check out your next build if you build another one. This is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. Thanks for joining us today.